Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. It's Tuesday, September 7th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Even though a judge has ordered Missouri to accept Medicaid expansion applications, the legislative and legal fights over the issue have left many confused. Kind of like a roller coaster. You know, yes, it's going to happen. No, it's not. It's going to court. And then, yes, it's going to happen. <laughs> we'll examine the Medicaid expansion application process and why it's leaving thousands of people in limbo in just a few minutes. Research from Washington University finds coronavirus vaccines can provide some protection for people with weakened immune systems who are at a much higher risk of developing COVID-19. St. Louis Public Radio's Shayla Farzan reports. When someone has an autoimmune disease, like rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system can go into hyperdrive, attacking the body's own tissues. Medications used to treat these diseases tamp down on the immune system, which can make vaccinations less effective. But new research finds about 90 percent of immunosuppressed patients vaccinated for the coronavirus produced infection-fighting antibodies. Barnes-Jewish Hospital physician Alfred Kim co-authored the study. You know, whether you're immunosuppressed or not, the data is quite clear that the vaccinations work. Kim says immunocompromised patients had weaker immune responses than healthy people, suggesting a third vaccine dose could provide necessary protection. I'm Shayla Farzan, St. Louis Public Radio. A new nonprofit aims to help more Missouri women break into the cannabis industry. We Are Jane plans to create a resource directory to help established entrepreneurs as well as newcomers to the market. Co-president and cannabis consultant Tammy Preer says cannabis is one of the fastest growing sectors of the U.S. economy. Both in terms of revenue and job growth. And so we really want to make sure that the people that are leading the charge tomorrow and into the future, that there are a lot of women among them and women who are prepared to step into leadership roles. Prier says there's a lot of turnover in Missouri's new cannabis industry because women are not getting equitable treatment and opportunities. She hopes to alleviate those struggles by building a strong mentorship and networking group. Time is running out for lawmakers in Springfield to agree on a massive energy climate plan that will stop Exelon from closing two of its nuclear power plants. As Hannah Meisel reports, the company says it will close its plant in Byron on September 13th if lawmakers do not come through with nearly $700 million in subsidies already agreed to months ago. Holding up those subsidies in a larger energy and climate deal is disagreement about how to curb emissions from two municipally owned coal-fired power plants in Illinois. Environmental groups and Governor J.B. Pritzker say those plants need to start cutting emissions as soon as possible and be subject to permanent closure in the next 25 years. But Senate President Don Harmon says forcing plants to invest in expensive scrubber technology while also facing a hard shutdown doesn't make economic sense. We are very open to being proved that some hybrid can work. My intuition is just that's going to be a real challenge. Environmental Group's newest proposal would force the plants to cut emissions 45 percent by 2035 and all the way to zero by 2045. I'm Hannah Meisel. An exhibit explaining the history of the LGBTQ community in Kansas City has reopened in a state building in Jefferson City. That's after it was removed from the Missouri Capitol last week. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources says the exhibit opened Saturday in the Lohman Building near the Capitol. The display was removed from the Missouri State Museum after Republican lawmakers complained. State Senator Greg Grazer, a Democrat from Kansas City, criticized that decision. DNR Director Drew Button apologized for how the incident unfolded. In August, a judge ordered the state of Missouri to start accepting applications under Medicaid expansion, but the state says it cannot start processing those applications until October 1st. As Sebastian Martinez Valdivia reports, that's left a lot of Missourians in limbo. Sarah Lynn Irwin has been a certified application counselor for close to a decade. She helps patients at the Northeast Missouri Health Council in Kirksville navigate the often complicated process of accessing social services like Medicaid. And the legislative and legal fights over Medicaid expansion have only added to the confusion. Kind of like a roller coaster, you know, yes, it's going to happen, no, it's not. 
to go into court, and then yes, it's going to happen. <laughs> After a judge ordered Missouri to follow through with voter-approved expansion, an estimated 250,000 Missourians now qualify for the service. Under expansion, Medicaid covers people making up to 138 percent of the federal poverty level. Many of those newly eligible for the program have questions Irwin can't answer yet. And Irwin is not alone. She's been meeting virtually with other application counselors and social workers from across the state who've raised a wide range of questions. When will coverage start for those that are applying for Medicaid expansion? They're asking what types of coverages, you know, like will dental and vision be covered? The answers to many of those questions will depend on the Family Support Division of the State Department of Social Services, which says it needs another month to get the program up and running. Even then, a bigger question remains. Are people really aware that Medicaid expansion is now happening? The state has done next to nothing to advertise expansion outside of a court-ordered notice on the website for Missouri's Medicaid service called MoHealthNet. That means many of those who now qualify for coverage might not even know it. Nonprofits, health care providers, and even local health departments are trying to pick up the slack when it comes to outreach. Just with everyone we serve, we're making sure folks know that uh, about the expansion. Steve Hollis is the human services manager at the Columbia Boone County Public Health and Human Services Department. He says the department is working on getting the word out, but like many other local health departments in Missouri, it's been stretched thin by the Delta variant-driven surge in COVID-19 cases. So on our end, it's probably going to be more electronic communications with their partners, just reaching out to the people we serve. And, and you know, that includes people that we're communicating with about disease investigation and contact tracing. I mean, Hollis says Medicaid expansion has been the biggest change he's wanted to see in the state for years. Missouri is one of the last states to expand Medicaid eligibility through the Affordable Care Act. Manet Health Senior Managing Director Patricia Buzang says that can present another obstacle to getting people enrolled. Because you have a lot of people that think like, oh, you know, I've been there, I've tried that, I've applied before, I'm not eligible. Buzang advises states on Medicaid expansion design. She says other states have found innovative ways to get people enrolled, including using the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. Some states, when they were expanding late, you know, took their CHIP program rosters, looked at who their parents were, and did outreach to their parents to say, hey, looks like you're eligible for Medicaid now. And the state has an incentive to get people enrolled. The federal government covers 90 percent of costs for expansion enrollees compared to just 60 percent for existing recipients. But there's a lot Missouri has to work out in the meantime. It says it needs to update the complex computer systems used to manage enrollment and wasn't budgeted enough by the legislature. For her part, application counselor Irwin says she gets it. She believes state officials are working hard and in good faith. But I also understand that there are individuals out there that need coverage. The question of when they're going to get it is still up in the air. I'm Sebastián Martínez Valdivia. Sebastián is a reporter at member station KBIA in Colombia. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.